welcome you inside the Christenberry Fieldhouse for another exciting doubleheader of basketball. The second of our twin bill is a big one. It's the Jaguars and the Bearcats as the Jaguars have won five of the last six meetings between these two teams. But it was the Lander squad that won the last ball game. We'll have the tip off of this one coming up in just a few moments from Christenberry Fieldhouse in Augusta, Georgia. You're watching SUV TV. Big one in college basketball on this Wednesday in Augusta, Georgia. Dip Mitris in his 16th season, matching wits against Drew Richards in his first season at Lander. The Bearcats with three returning starters from last year's squad. That was 12 and 17, and in sixth place in the conference. Augusta, the defending champions. But it's Lander atop the rest of the pack with a 10 and 2 mark. They, along with UNC Pembroke, with that 10 and 2 record, and both 16 and 4, their overall marks. Augusta just a couple of places back with an 8 and 4 mark. 13 and 7 is their record overall. And uh, Chad, let's check out the uh, starting lineup for the Augusta Jaguars. Well, as usual, we've got Tyree Myers and Miguel Arnold in the backcourt, the two sophomores that you know, have become veterans since day one on this team. Rafael Montero, the preseason first team all peach belt player at the four spot. Troy Cracknell, the three-point specialist at the three. And Tyshawn Crawford, the big seven-footer, the sophomore who's been playing so well lately, averaging 14 points and 10 rebounds in conference play at the center spot. All right, let's get to the keys to victory. Well, the first thing Coach Dimitris pointed out was Augusta needs to win the battle of the boards. Lander's in the top 10 in the country in rebound margin. Augusta's actually in the top 40, so these are two teams that take care of the backboard. Whoever does it better tonight will have a great chance at winning. Limit direct line drives. Augusta's a good defensive team. Dimitris is a good defensive coach, and one thing you can't allow is the ball to get directly to the basket. And then the third thing is what tonight's all about. Uh, you mentioned it, Lander being in first place in conference play, tied with Pembroke. Augusta two games behind. Augusta would like nothing more than to close that gap here tonight with a win at home. So Augusta scores 81 points. They allow their opponents 74. While Lander scores 85 points a game, should should be up and down. As the five for Augusta head out on the floor and await the starters for Lander, kind of feeling the basketball. 
They'll pass it over to our officials working tonight's game. That's Art Balk, Chris King, and Charlie Bolinek. Tyshawn Crawford, Tyree Myers, Miguel Arnold. Facing off with Rafael Montero and Troy Cracknell. And the tip is controlled as it happens almost every game. They allowed Tyshawn an easy tip with no resistance. Montero. Tyree Myers. And Miguel Arnold with the first jump shot in the air. Off the back iron, kept alive by Crawford. Myers from deep. And he knocks it down. Second chance opportunity caused by Tyshawn Crawford's long arms on that play. Augusta had 10 made threes in the first meeting between these two. First loss of the conference season, 88 to 82 was the final count. In the low post, jump hook in the paint, no good. Crawford fighting for it at the bottom. Excellent. You can see jump ball is the call, <laughs> held ball, possession arrow in favor of Lander. Tyshawn Crawford doing an excellent job staying big there, forcing the miss. Now he's got to get out on the perimeter and watch the jump shot get knocked down by Elijah Alston. Alston had a huge game in the first meeting, 23 points, 8 rebounds, and he's off to a fast start as he deadlocks this one at three apiece. Montero to Myers. Cracknell. Shot clock down to five. Montero looking for space. Turns and faces two seconds. Fall away jump shot is long, and that's a shot clock violation. The ball will go over to the Bearcats. Bearcats are riding a six-game win streak. They're six and three on the road. They shoot 49% from the field, 39% from three-point land, 74% free throw shooting team. Grab 40 boards and assist on 14 made field goals a game. Five on the floor for them, Tyler Brevard, Elijah Austin, Dewan Moore, LaRaymond Spivery, and the fifth gentleman is Deshondre Rucker. Great job on that last play by Tyree Myers to shrink the floor and come up with that steal, helping his teammate Miguel Arnold. Inside, Crawford elevates and puts it up and down with the left hand. Tyshawn Crawford sporting the brand new dude tonight. Gives his team a two to nothing, a two point advantage rather, five to three at the 726 mark. We're just underway. Pull up a chair and enjoy the action. That's Moore elevating, knocking it down. Moore averages 12 points a game. Gus has gotten all five of its points after second chance opportunities created by Tyshawn Crawford. The first one resulted in a Tyree Myers three, the second one on a Crawford lay-in. Crawford double teamed in the post. And a foul is committed by the Bearcats. Miguel Arnold goes over the top on the post pass, takes what the defense gives him as far as the front and the post. Crawford gets fouled on the reach. Montero to Crawford outside. Montero can't run it down. Lander did a good job of pushing Rafael Montero out of his spot in the post. Tyree Myers might have forced that a little bit, but that's part of the game plan for Augusta is to feed that post, whether it be Montero or Tyshawn Crawford. Brevard lost control momentarily to the hands of Moore. Driving and rejected, and oh my. Uh, 
It's going to be hard to find a foul on this replay. Tyshawn Crawford does a good job moving his feet. Straight up. Looks like all ball on that one. Moore connects on a pair of free throws. The junior from Pensacola. And Lander with their first lead at 7 to 5. Crawford in the low post. He flushes it home. Great job by Miguel Arnold recognizing the front of the post again, setting up. Tyshawn Crawford beautifully for that two-handed stuff. Crawford chasing it down in the corner. Two hands, keeps his balance. I love Tyshawn Crawford's activity on the boards on both ends. Cracknell launches and delivers. Cracknell had 19 points on five of six shooting from behind the arc in that first matchup. Getting off to a solid start here. Although he loses his offensive player, the guy he was guarding knocked down the perimeter jump shot. That was Alston with his second made three. Crawford pushed out, goes cross court. And now Montero with a clear out. And he knocks it down. Just a matter of time before those post touches for Rafael Montero turn into buckets like that. And right back the other way, Moore. He's got six already. Moore is a tough matchup for Tyshawn Crawford. Crawford's doing a good job, but sometimes good offense beats good defense. That's what we saw there on that 17-footer by Moore. Yeah, Moore at 6'9". Finley built. Track now feeling a little bit of pressure. There's a whistle out on the perimeter. We've got the under 16 timeout. Good recognition here by Miguel Arnold finding the pure shooter, Troy Cracknell, with just a little bit of daylight. That's all he needs. Another good job by Miguel Arnold finding Crawford here. Defense plays over the top. Moore plays over the top. Everything about what Tyshawn's doing is so much more in rhythm now. See him catch that ball and finish. Nice little footwork. Ran down a defensive rebound, loose ball defensive rebound earlier that led to that Troy Cracknell three-pointer. Here's, here's Crawford running down this loose ball, seven-footer, out hustling, two lander players. That resulted in that Troy Cracknell three-pointer. We're gonna actually see it here, good recognition. Passing forward, the next one was Miguel Arnold to Troy Cracknell there. So in addition to that, running down that defensive rebound, Crawford got two offensive rebounds in, in the first five minutes and 30 seconds that resulted in five more Augusta points. You mentioned all the hustle that Cracknell has, that uh, Tyshawn has done, but also Miguel Arnold, you also mentioned him distributing the basketball, not necessarily scoring it out on the onset. That's right, and I think it's just a matter of time before he starts putting in the hoop as well. There he goes, right on cue. You've been here before, Chad. <laughs> San Juan, Puerto Rico's own Miguel Arnold, the sophomore, averaging 12 points a game. That was number 57 from long range. Augusta comes out in a zone, gets it. Lander a little bit out of rhythm. One pass and a shot, defensive rebound for the home team. Montero, Myers at the foul line, he gets sandwiched. The foul is on the Bearcats, 
Here we're going to see Arnold with this quick release. It's a thing of beauty. I think we're going to see, actually, we're going to see Tyree Myers get fouled from every angle. I think this is the one where we see Miguel. Watch this quick release. He just lets it fly. It's actually a nice ry rhythm shot. Sometimes he can catch that ball and be heavily guarded and just release it. You don't even think that he can get it off, but he does. Darren Lucas White checking in. Tyree Myers will step out. Zane Rankin, young man out of Butler High School. Resides in Charlotte, North Carolina. Montero. That's a three ball for the leading scorer for Augusta, averaging 18 points, nine rebounds, and three assists a game. Rejection inside by Tyshawn. He's running the floor. Three ball in the air. Arnold can't make it. Dance Crawford inside. Pump fakes. Crawford tries a two-hand slam. Off the back iron and back the other way. Augusta remains in this 2-3 zone. Zane Rankin, two trips and two threes for him. Of course, that's something that a zone can give up is that standstill three-pointer. Rankin's made Augusta pay for it twice since checking in. There it is, Crawford. Wiped the ball out of his hand. He wanted contact and a foul. And now Crawford will get his first breather as Robert Barloon checks in. I talked about Tyshawn Crawford's rhythm. Everything is very crisp from, from him right now. Didn't go for the fake, stayed on the floor, wait for the ball to get released, and just took it out of the air. You know, you mentioned Moore being 6'9". That just shows how big Tyshawn Crawford is when he gets out on that court again. You'll see him standing next to Moore, and looks like looks like he makes him look about six foot six. That was Montero, faked one way and went the other. And reading it the whole time was Tyree Myers. Both guys well in sync with each other. Two veterans for the Jaguars. Seven points for Montero. Lucas White. Miguel between the legs. Montero with the shot clock down. Nearing the 10 second mark, he'll back him in. Good defensive effort. Drive and now a kick. Myers top of the circle. Ball tipped around and Montero in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or is he? Yeah, it looks like he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He picks up his second personal foul, and we've got a media timeout on the floor. Yeah, this is Rankins making his second three since checking in. He kind of shakes his hand like he's on fire. This is the first one he made right after checking in. This is where Tyree Myers and Rafael Montero are in, in sync. Moore plays over the top, so Montero cuts back door, and Tyree Myers spies it the entire time, just waiting for Montero to make that cut. This is Montero coming off. That would have been the action that he got from Tyree if Moore wouldn't have played over the top. So Moore's kind of Darned if he does and darned if he doesn't when it comes to playing 
one side or the other on Montero. But something happened there at the end. Montero was angry with Coach Dimitris. Dimitris kept his composure. You know, I'm not sure if he's angry with Dip or not, but I think he got called for that foul. Second foul, that is frustrating. Second foul, he'll be on the bench now for the last 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Montero gets called for the second foul. Dip was trying to say something to him as he come, came off the court, and Rafael could not be composed, could not be consoled. He's still over there frustrated on the bench. Ball tipped around as Crawford returns to the lineup. And grabs the board. And now he's got Rucker trying to guard him at 6'5". There he is, Crawford in close, count it, and a foul. I can't say enough about Tyshawn Crawford's development. He, does, he avoids the over the back here. This is a play that would have been over the back all throughout the beginning of this season. But he just kind of finesses this, draws the foul, has the concentration to make the and one. He's just playing outstanding basketball. Crawford has six, 49% free throw shooter. He's fired on his first attempt. Brevard with the basketball. Augusta goes man. Barian, former Lakeside product. That's the second time today Tyree Myers has stepped in to help his teammate. He got a steal on the first one. Here he's gonna take a, a man's charge. Watch him take this contact and just go flying to the ground, almost head first. That's not an acting job there. Tyree Myers, Coach Dimitris calls this shrinking the floor when you step in and help your teammate and cut off these dribbling dri drives to the basket. Tyree Myers, coach on the floor, just executes flawlessly there. Barloom. Robert Barloom. Well done by Robert. He's coming on lately. He's always been a very smart, good defensive player. Now he's starting to find the rhythm offensively as well. Barian. Got a little experience covering him. Yeah, speaking of rhythm, Deion Barian, look for that mid-range jumper. He shot, that was his third one of the game, the first one to go down, but he's reliable with that. Lakeside star, local guy, Augusta guy former Lakeside High School player. Lucas White, everything but the bottom. There's Tyshawn Crawford with the monster slam. Lander coach Drew Richards is furious, probably at the fact that Augusta has converted so many offensive rebound baskets. All coaches hate that. I think he was mad at Sidney Robinson for not collecting that loose ball. You know, how does the seven-footer collect the loose ball off the floor before the, you know, the guard? I think that's what probably made Coach Drew Richards so mad on that play. You know, it's not often when a coach calls timeout outside of the media timeout these days. You know, I think the strategy is to save those. I mean, you get so many of them, you get five of them per half. So when a guy calls timeout at the 909 mark and meets a player halfway on his way to the bench with a <laughs> stern yelling, you know he's not happy. More out on the perimeter. Barion, right side. Austin with an air ball. Second try from long range, and it's good. 
Just shows you how important these second chance opportunities are. Battle of the boards was the first key to the game. Augusta benefited from it right before that timeout. There you had an air ball. You force an air ball from Alston, and somehow Lander's able to collect that ball. Ends in a three-point basket for the Bearcats. That was Lorraine Spivery, who averages eight points a game. Lucas White on the strong drive. You know, before that last three by Lander, Augusta was able to take a seven point advantage with Rafael Montero on the bench. I look over at, there at him, he's still, he's still talking about that call that sent him there. He's not happy. One thing I wonder is will Coach Mitras hold to his normal course, which is to keep a guy out with two fouls for the entire first half. You know, with your best player over there, you wonder if he'll make an exception here today. Barlow might make it an easier decision. Sure might. What a great find by Tyree Myers. The point guard out of Maryland is playing excellent basketball here tonight. There's that height differential you mentioned, 6'9 and 7 foot out on the perimeter. More, I swear more, it looks like he's 6'6 standing there by Tyshawn Crawford. He's a heck of a player, though. He's a handful, no matter how tall he is. Speaking of a handful. Shot clock violation. And you talked about in the pregame the importance of defense, and there it is out on the perimeter. Yeah, I mean, like I was going to say, speaking of a handful, Darren Lucas White, we're going to see, watch this feed by Tyree Myers. Gets up in the air, kind of like Trey Young does for the Hawks. Gets up in the air, makes the defense commit to something and then makes a nice little pass to Barloom. But on that last defensive play, Darren Lucas White, it was the second really good one-on-one -on -one defensive play he's made since checking in. We haven't really called his name much here today. He had such a great game, a great second half Saturday against Columbus State, but he caused a wild shot to be taken, the hit backboard only. Lander's able to get the rebound, but not able to get into anything quick enough to get a shot off. So basically, Darren Lucas White forces that 30-second call. To your point, one, another key to the game was limit straight line drives, and nobody in the Peach Belt is better at that than Darren Lucas White. We get a chance to see him right there again. Yeah. You know, so far, we'll get the stats here hopefully soon. The battle of the boards, I would say, has gone Augusta's way, especially with Tyshawn Crawford on the offensive glass, limiting direct drives. We just saw a little bit of that from Darren Lucas White. Yeah, we touched on it. Two-game win streak for Augusta, six-game win streak for Lander, and the two victories for Augusta. The first one was a week ago, Wednesday. Of course, today against USC Aiken, 79-71 was the final, and on Saturday, 74-64 game that we brought you right here on SUV TV. Powered by AUG B-Ball, 74-64 over Columbus State. So following the timeout, Augusta was a six-point edge. Their largest lead was seven in this one. Crawford has a little low post, turns and faces, goes up. A whistle and a foul committed in the post. Moore picks up his first personal. Just much improved footwork by Tyshawn Crawford. Keeps from traveling here, uses his big body to draw a foul. Seven fouls now called on Lander, Lander to only two for Augusta. That's a product of getting the ball into the paint on a regular basis. Second time at the stripe, and he knocks it down. You know, one, I won't call it a benefit of Rafael Montero being on the bench with two fouls, but one byproduct of that is Augusta's still going to pound the ball into the post, and now who do they pound it into on a regular basis? Tyshawn Crawford, who's playing his best basketball of the season. So you don't want to have Montero on the bench, but it's nice to have an option like Crawford when he does go there. And the crowd knowing his uh, issues at the charity strike, love that one. It's a nice Garden City cheer. Bavard, Marion. Loose ball, kept alive to Brevard. 
Offensive rebound for Lander. Gusta did a great job of forcing a tough shot. Couldn't finish the possession with a rebound, though. Marion can't make it work. Rebounded by Augusta. That's a great block out by Miguel Arnold. Smallest man on the floor with that board. You gotta love it when a guy gets a rebound standing flat footed. That means he's positioned himself and the ball falls into his hands. Speaking of flat footed, extra pass. Crack now. I think Tyshawn Crawford just said, what haven't I done today? I've made free throws, I've dunked, I've gotten us second chances, I've run down loose balls. I haven't gotten an assist yet. Let me find Troy Crack now. Now we have Crawford stuck on a guard. Wide open three. Knocked down by Brevard. That's yep. his first field goal. Yeah, Miguel Arnold was trying to run Tyshawn Crawford off to pick up that guard. So the matchups were went haywire from Augusta and Brevard took advantage. And that throw away. Like a bounce pass in that effort. Myers came with the short range pass. Dimitris not too pleased. You gotta be pleased here. Yeah, Crawford running down another loose ball. Well poised. Hits his teammate for the layup. Brevard out on the wing. Three-point attempt, no good. And another board for Crawford. Myers, top of the circle, three, and it's good. I really like the way Tyree Myers is playing today. He's doing a little bit of everything, including making big shots from behind the arc. Inside of five minutes left in the opening half. Just up ten for the second time, and there's Lucas White. Let's run. Lander the other way, unabated to the basket. They lay it up and down, but there's Crawford not giving up. Sidney Robinson with his first field goal. He averages 10 points a game. That man out of Charleston had 14 in the first meeting. That foul will go against Kadrin. Kadzaru. You familiar with that name, Chad? Yeah, Kadrin Kadzaru's brother, Vlad, was a uh, excellent post player here for, at Augusta. I saw him earlier. He's a dental student, you know, in, in the school of dentistry, I guess is what it's called at Augusta University. Brilliant student, always has been. There's some real bragging rights going on here tonight. Yeah, they played against each other one time. Vlad's final season here at Augusta was Codron's first season at Lander. I like Coach Dimitris putting Miguel Arnold right back in the game when he and Tyree Myers had a miscommunication earlier. He took Miguel out, and Miguel had words with Tyree and Coach Dimitris. Not, not, not bad words, just... A little bit of back and forth. Guys are competitive. Getting him right back out here on the court. I like that move by Coach Mitras. Brevard nearly traveled. Working against Arnold. Dribbles right into the seven-footer. Now sets up a teammate for three. That's Rankin. That's his third made triple. And it cuts the leads to seven. Every time Rankin makes a three, he shakes his hand like, this thing's hot. <laughs> He's right so far. Watch him after he makes his three, how he shakes his hand. Troy Cracknell just gets a little misdirected there. 
Rankin can't believe how hot his hand is. You know, without Rankin, Augusta would have a much bigger lead. Rankin's made, I think, three out of his three three-point attempts here. Speaking of three-point attempts, here's Tyree Myers. Looking to be aggressive offensively. He's definitely got that in his repertoire. You know, Rankin just made his, as I just said, his third three and three attempts, and Augusta still leads by seven. They're playing, Augusta's playing a pretty flawless game on that defensive end. Everything's difficult. 31 points after 16 minutes and you know, like I said, without those three three-pointers, you'd really have a, a heck of a defensive uh, stretch by the Jaguars. Yeah, three-point shooting at a premium tonight. Augusta with five made threes. Lander with seven in the uh, women's contest that preceded this one. Lander had 11 made three-pointers in their victory over the Jaguar women. I mean, to your point, seven made threes for Lander. That's 21 points out of 31 coming from the three-point line. In that first contest, Lander remained undefeated in women's basketball play. The 22nd-ranked team won it going away 85-61. to 61. Lucas White couldn't cash in. And Lander wants to run. Picking it out on the wing. Wide open three. And a rare miss for the Bearcats. Now the hit ahead. Long pass to Barloon. Saves it. Lucas White trying to find an angle. Throws it up. Rebounded by Crawford. Crawford keeps his pivot foot. And then they say he didn't. I think the referee missed a foul here. There's a lot of sweat. Look at that. Holy cow, he got clubbed with two forearms by Kabzaru. Tyshawn's been so dominant here today. At some point, you, you almost think the referees want to stop giving him calls, but he definitely earned that one. The dip is working the official. <laughs> he missed that one. Shot clock near violation. Great defensive effort by the Jaguars. So seven point game. Balloon getting extended minutes. There's the big fella. Double team, finds Cracknell for three. Tyshawn Crawford is so good at that skip pass, reading the double team and hitting shooters. Troy Cracknell is as good as they get from behind the arc. Excellent team basketball by Augusta. Another great defensive possession by Tyree Myers. Lander got bailed out on the foul call at the end on Robert Barloon. But, you know, Tyree Myers is in those gaps again, helping defensively, shrinking the floor like Dimitris calls it. You know, after you, you get a foul there at the 146 mark, and you look up third foul of the half. And that's the defense that Augusta's playing. You know, when you're playing great defense, you avoid fouling. And so you can afford to reach in there, and it doesn't kill you. Put Lander on the free, free throw line. Rankin with his fourth three-pointer of the opening half. Cuts the lead to seven. Barlow. Gets his pocket pick and stolen back by Myers. They say he went over and back. He's saying I didn't have quite have possession of the basketball. The 3,000 referees in the building didn't agree with that call. 
Yeah, the argument is Tyree Myers didn't have control. Cracknell and Myers all over him. Foul committed by Myers. So Tyree needs to keep his head here. This is just good basketball by him. Again, it's only his first foul. It's only the fourth on Augusta. Here he is again, though, shrinking the floor, helping teammates. It's been difficult to dribble the basketball against Augusta because of Tyree Myers' activity. Gamora scores inside. Finding a little bit easier against Barloon versus Crawford. His third field goal, he's got eight. Myers on the kick out. Cracknell has it, great hands. Shot clock at 10. Lucas White all the way to the rack and gets it blocked by Barian. Fast break. TJ Knight. TJ Knight found Sidney Robinson with the finish. Second field goal for Robinson. It's a heck of a Euro step here. Sidney Robinson was instrumental in Landers' win over Augusta earlier last month. Rankin with his fourth three of the game. Man, without Rankin, where would Lander be? Eight threes, four of those coming from Rankin, who averages five points a game, Chad. He's working on a career high tonight. One second differential between shot and game clock. I look for maybe Troy Cracknell to get a look coming off the screen here. Myers wants to take it himself. Throws it up there. Cracknell tries to follow. Ball tipped around, and that will end the first half of play. So we played 20 minutes at the Christenberry Fieldhouse. The number one rated team in the Peach Belt, Lander, coming in with a 10 and 2 record. Currently tied for first place with UNC Pembroke. Augusta two games back in the win column. Eight wins overall. And they lead it at the break by three. They've led it by as many as 11 at the end of the first half. Score 41 to 38. Halftime festivities include Clint Bryant, the athletic director for Augusta, on the floor and several honorees on this day of recognizing women in sports, as well as young girls striving to do their best in Augusta University, constantly on top of things when it comes down to diversity and inclusion in their athletic program. Our halftime score, 41 to 38. And we'll come back and give you the numbers from this one in just a few minutes. You're watching Augusta University basketball on SUV TV. It's powered by AUGB Ball. You are anything but ordinary. You have your own path and your own potential to realize. At Augusta University, the advantages created by our diversity in thought, culture, and collaboration give you and us infinite opportunity. Together, we're changing our community, our campus, and our world. We are boundless. We are Augusta University.
Time ago, we didn't have all this.
And welcome back inside the Chris and Berry Fieldhouse. Wednesday evening and Augusta with a three-point edge at the break. In this game, Chad, we talked on the uh, keys coming into this game, straight line defense stopping yeah. that, uh, and but an outstanding shooting first half on both sides. Yeah, and, you know, I think the story of that first half, you have Augusta playing pretty flawless defense unless you, unless you say, well, you also have to run guys off the three-point line. So Lander making eight threes. I don't know if that's, you know, red-hot shooting, uh, deficiency in a w the way Augusta's uh, covering the three-point line. But even with that, Augusta led 41-31 after Rafael Montero sat the last 12 minutes of the first half. And it, but it, at the end, a 7-0 run by Lander. It was just a matter of time probably that not having Rafael available would end up catching up with the Jags and, and, and allow uh, – Lander to make a little bit of a run, and they did at, this, at the end of the first half. So now you have a pretty much anybody's ball game going into the second half, a red-hot shooting Lander team, a, 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 an Augusta team that's playing well. Tyshawn Crawford, 12 points, 9 rebounds, 4 for 5 from the field, and get this, 4 for 5 from the free throw line. So, you know, bright spots to go around with Augusta. I talked at length about Tyree Myers' play. And, uh, you know, Augusta starts with the ball and trying to build on this three-point lead. 55% shooting from the two-point land and overall shooting for Augusta. And uh, three-point shooting at 60% for Augusta, 61.5% for Lander. Lander a perfect two for two from the line and five of seven was Augusta from the charity stripe. Augusta out rebounding them 11 to, excuse me, 15 to 11. And from an assist standpoint, it was Lander with an 11 to 9 advantage. As the first possession didn't go Augusta's way. Your leading scores, as Chad alluded to, Tyshawn Crawford with near a double double, 12 and 9. Eight points and one rebound for Troy Cracknell, seven for Rafael Montero. The leading scorer on the other side was Jawan Moore. War with eight points and Zane Rankin with four made threes. He had 12 tied for Crawford for overall game high honors. Going off the second half with another rejection by Crawford. That is his second block. And Augusta looking to cut into that first place lead. That's currently two games. By Lander and UNC Pembroke. Don't want to forget about them. Reverse move by the man with two fouls. And that's Rafael Montero with the early field goal. Augusta extending their lead to five. Five reach. The moisture on the floor. Next up for the Jaguars is a trip to the oldest town in America. They'll head down to St. Augustine this coming Saturday to face Flagler. Doubleheader action, 1.30 and 3.30. And we won't be back home until the 15th of February against the other team in first place, in the Peach Belt, UNC Pembroke. As Miguel Arnold gets in the scoring column from deep. This is second field goal, both from long range. And the lead is back up to six. They got an offensive foul registered against the Bearcats. We saw Rafael Montero do that twice last game, take that offensive foul. Great job here. By I talked about that quick release by Miguel Arnold. Here you see it. Very little space given. 
Very little space needed. Montero and Cracknell break the press. And into the hands of the point guard, Myers. Arnold. And we got a foul called inside, and that'll go against Tyshawn. Yeah, Tyshawn was being leaned on hard there. I glanced away and I missed the contact. We'll see it here. Tyshawn's being leaned on. He just kind of moves that arm in a manner that allows the defender to fall back and sell the foul call. More. Rejection number three. Tyshawn's timing's been great here today on these block shots. See it here, he just spikes this one. I don't know if he's being recruited by the volleyball team, but after his play like that, it might be the case. Could lead the peak belt and kills. Looked for number four that time. Didn't happen. That's a beautiful reverse. And that's Alston. Alston has eight. Justin led by as many as 11. That's Crawford in the low post. They have got the benefit of the doubt on that one. I mean, every time Augusta throws the ball into Tyshawn Crawford, he's going to take a beating. There he is receiving contact from in front and behind. Not sure who they got on the foul. Rucker? Yes. That's his third. Montero. To Myers. The ball screen. Now Montero pulls up and knocks it down. Man, what post player do you know that catches it at 18 feet, jab steps two or three times, and then just rises up and buries it? The only one I know is Rafael Montero. Huge rebound by Crawford. Here's Myers. Kicks it out. Cracknell. Too strong on that attempt for Vard. On the wing. Jump shot's good. Spivery. So a miss by Troy Cracknell and a long rebound by Lander starts a little bit of a break and Augusta doesn't quite match up and Spivery makes him pay. That was thrown away more. Stepped in the passing lane. Spivery. Brevard. Barrier. Spivery. Goes right at the defender. And they're going to call an offensive foul. I just, That's a big call right there. I mean, number three. I just can't say enough about Rafael Montero. He did it. Saturday against Columbus State, took two charges in the second half in an important time. Here he does it. He comes off the bench after sitting for 12 minutes in the first half with two fouls, draws two offensive fouls in the first four minutes of the second half. This guy is the most sound, fundamental basketball player in this conference for sure. Might be the most sound, fundamental basketball player I've ever watched in person on a regular basis. on the fact that Augusta will be on the road headed down to St. Augustine on Saturday. The Bearcats will travel to Columbus State on Saturday.
Yeah, you mentioned the game at Flagler on Saturday. All these games mean so much now. Lander being first in the conference with two losses. And Augusta being in fourth place in the conference with four losses. So this, this game means everything. At least at the current moment it does. The Flagler game Saturday will mean a lot because Flagler's right behind Augusta, nipping at their heels. So a, a win there makes that gap wider. A loss brings Flagler into the mix. Very competitive season on the men's side as well as the women's side, although Lander out in front on the women's side. Cracknell and Myers again work the ball in the front court. Arnold with the pull up. Beautiful basketball by Miguel Arnold. He is so fun to watch shoot the basketball. Last year, basically a guy you'd find and he would knock down shots on the perimeter as your boy Ditch did it again. <laughs> Rafael Montero, here we're gonna see Miguel. It's just beautiful. It gets the defender going back, stops on a dime. That's all the space he needs, doesn't even touch the rim. And then on the other end, Rafael Montero takes his third charge in under five minutes of play here in the second half. The point I was making, Chad, in his freshman year, he was more of a catch-and-shoot guy. Yeah. Now he's developed the ability to put the ball on the floor and do pretty much anything he wants to with it. Yeah, yeah. Not only set up a teammates on the on the uh, offensive end as a point guard, but still with the ability to catch and shoot and dribble to his shot and knock it down. We got some more moisture on the floor. Six-point game. Nice move inside. Count the basket and a foul. More. You know, I'm shocked that the referee out near half court called that call. Watch the referee on the baseline. He's not the one to call it. He looks like he has the best view to me. And he does get fouled. Okay, so it's a good call. Good. Ten points of the game now for Moore. He averages 12 points a contest. It's the first zone I can recall Lander playing. Gusta with shooters around the perimeter. We'll see if somebody gets free for one. I guess, I guess Lander's going back to a man. What a catch by Montero and a finish high off the window. <laughs> wow. Fifty-two, forty-six. The Jaguars up by six. And another defensive stand by Crawford and company. Ooh, bullet pass off the shoulder of Crawford. Tyree. Miguel launching. Kept alive by Crawford, looking for somebody. There's a hold on the part of Mora. Battle of the boards, Tyshawn Crawford gets his team an extra possession. That rebound battle, by the way, was 17 to seven last stat sheet we got. I mean, I'm sorry, 17 to 17 last stat sheet we got. Yeah, 
The margin may be six, but it's a lot closer than that. As there's a steal. And Barian with a rare right-handed shot attempt. Sticking him in the hole was Brevard. So the 6-3 guard elevating. So much like the second, the first half, we have a situation where Landers picked up seven fouls versus two for Augusta. Tyree Myers, look, look at this pass and this catch. More so the catch than anything. But Miguel Arnold does a really good job of throwing that ball over the top. So yeah, I, got, I got to give him his credit too. But man, what a catch and finish by Rafael Montero. This is just incredible. Yeah, there's a cartoon character who has go-go gadget arms. I think that's Rafael Montero's yeah. alter ego. And he, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but then he finishes it over the 6'9 guy, right, right. who I would think is 6'6", after standing next to um, Tyshawn Crawford all day. Wow. You know, that's part of the reason why when Ra Rafael Montero picked up his second foul in the first half, I was so disappointed because, you know, you, you hate to not be able to see him play basketball. He does so many unique things that you don't see from other players. It's just a real joy to watch him play. Myers, two of three at the stripe. He's got nine in the ball game, 80% free throw shooter, averages eight points and four assists a contest. So with, with Augusta going zone, watch Rankin number 15. Wide open in the corner, Chad. Crawford tries to get out on him, and that was enough. As the ball goes off of Kadrin, Gonzaru. The Augusta basketball. So evidently, Zane Rankin can miss from the perimeter. I hadn't seen it before then. I think he got cooled off just a little bit. It's Tom on the bench. Four for four before that miss. Because if he wants to get heated up, all he has to do is look down at those shoes. Myers. And Brevard, what a matchup. Back to Brevard. This time to be guarded by Lucas White. Drives right by him. Lefty layup. No good, but there's a whistle. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Right, Sean Crawford picking up the foul. That's Ty's third. That might be the... Tyshawn Crawford's first mistake of the game. You know, no real future in that for him, reaching in at waist level. You want to stay big when you're Tyshawn, bother that shot. Couldn't resist reaching in, trying to strip that ball, helping Darren Lucas White. You like the fact that he's trying to help his teammate. He'll have to sit down with three fouls. So. See if you can see it here. I have no idea what that call was. So six points in the game for Brevard. Harrell, pump fake, off-balance shot. Rankin. 
Rankin for three. That's number five. And the lead is down to two. Augusta has led by as many as ten in this contest. All right, seven here in the second half. Montero turning and facing it. And they go everywhere but down. Augusta's going to have to find Rankin here. There's a rejection from behind. In close. A whistle. Oh, my. A foul in the paint. I think they're going to call Tyree Myers from the ground. I guess when Brevard, or when Kobzaru fell on him, that's a foul on Myers is what they're going to call. No, it's... Oh, man. He took advantage of the fact that Myers was on the floor and there was contact to throw up the ball. Smart play by Brevard, the senior. He'll get two free throws, and Dip Mitris looking for the SUV TV replay on that one. Dip was asking every referee for an explanation there. They finally just gave him the hand and told him they weren't going to entertain it. That's frustrating. Eleven oh two left. You know, Gus is going to have to earn this one. Two free throws here for Brevard, trying to tie the game. Eleven minutes left. Tyshawn Crawford on the bench with three fouls. Rafael Montero back in the game with two. Gus has gone to Montero twice in a row in the post. A few trips ago, he caught it at that eighteen foot mark. And jab step, jab step, nailed an 18-footer, which is such a difficult shot for a post player. And then in the next two possessions, they went to him again and in and out both times. Tough looks, but very good looks for him. Missed them both. We'll see if they go to Raphael again. If I'm an Augusta coach, I'm thinking, you know, getting – Keeping Miguel Arnold in rhythm, keeping him involved would be a good idea, as well as steadily feeding Montero. Right now, Augusta's playing without Tyree Myers, so it'll fall on Darren Lucas White and Miguel Arnold to orchestrate this offense and get Augusta in what it wants to be in. See if Lander switches from this zone to a man-to-man -man mid possession like they did a few possessions ago. Looks like they have. Eight points now in the game for Brevard. First time we've been deadlocked in quite some time. Augusta gets a good break there. Lander first leaves the shooter, Troy Cracknell, wide open. Cracknell unable to convert, but then Lander fights itself for the rebound and tips it out of bounds. Let's see here. Lucas White with the big fellow on the floor. Miguel Arnold will launch. A little strong in the shot. Mm. Arnold. Cracknell. Lucas White with the pull-up, and he's got it. That looked a lot better than what we saw from Darren at the end of the first half. He got a little too deep on several drives. Barion trying to answer the other way. Rebound and pulled down by Montero. Lucas White got Crawford in the post. Got to clear some room out for him. He'll come over to the other side. Cracknell, got a tipped up, no good. Spivery. Well, 
Brevard going on his shot attempt, trying to get it over the seven-footer. And T back comes Arnold. Tough task to do that. Great defensive possession by Augusta. Now they got it. Get it to the big guy. He tried to go with the ball reversal down to Lucas White. Foul committed inside. We'll go against number 15, Zane Rankin. That's his first, team's eighth. Now you can really feel the tension in here. Big conference game, one possession game. Sean Crawford. Clutch at the free throw line tonight. Shooting under 50% on the season. And that's his first miss. After making five consecutive. Five of seven on the night for Crawford. Loose ball and a steal. Darren Lucas White gets his pocket pick. Brevard loses it near the sideline. It's out of bounds. And Dimitris pointing the line. And saying right here is where it went out of bounds. That's the basketball gods paying back Darren Lucas White. Darren got on the floor for the loose ball and then somehow lost control of it on the other end, but he stays with it, hustling back, providing a little bit of pressure, but more than anything, that's just, like I said, the basketball guys giving Darren another shot at it. Three-point game. Montero, strong drive by Barrian to the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Love the way Rafael used his body there to ward off Dion Barrian. Give him a step. He's yours. 13 now for Montero. 59-54. They're in the under eight. Media timeout. The jump stop. Shot attempt up no good. And loose ball rebound goes into the hands of Myers. The high ball screen. Now the drive. Crack now to the basket. No. Tries to yank it out of the hands of Cazero. It's a held ball. Possession arrow will be in favor of Lander after the immediate timeout. Crack now doesn't finish here, but I love the fact that he's attacking the basket, balancing out his three point shooting with aggressive drives to the basket, keeping the defense honest. Stays with his miss. Forces the jump ball. It'll go Lander's way, but that means the next one will go to Augusta. Now, here's what I mean by if you give him a step, you're his. Rafael Montero, he's not the quickest player in the world, but he uses his footwork to catch Deion Barron out of position. And once you get, he gets you on his hip, you're all his. Here's Darren Lucas White not getting too deep, shooting that nice little soft jumper. He's got that in his game. Good resilience from Augusta. You see in the background here, up towards the top of your screen, in a burgundy shirt or a maroon shirt, Lakeside High School coach Jeff Williams. They won last night against Alcove, 67-64, and a thriller to qualify for the state tournament. Jeff's former player, Dion Barian, playing tonight for Lander. He's the player that actually Raphael just beat to the hoop. You know, the, the possession arrow had said it was Lander's ball, but I thought it was Augusta's ball, and now we're seeing that it actually is. So Augusta's got a chance now to build on this five-point lead.
Montero misses it. There's Crawford. And he gets rocked again. Rafael can't believe he missed that shot. That's his move. Kind of like similar to the old Kobe Bryant post move where you pivot and then take one extra little step. Wish I knew what that was called. Michael Jordan used to do it too. Anyway, that's Rafael's move and he missed the little bunny there to clean it up. It's good to have a seven footer there to clean up your miss like Tyshawn Crawford did there. Run into the one and one on the ninth foul by Lander. Unsuccessful. Back comes Lander. Long range three, no good. Followed up inside by Mora. Second field goal for Mora in the second half. He's got 12. Lucas White with the pull up. Darren Lucas White is a quick study. He got too deep on a few drives in the first half. Here in the second half, he's pulled up and made a soft little jumper twice. More front iron shot, no good. Long rebound. Here comes speed and quickness. Lucas White to the rack. Shades of Saturday from Darren Lucas White. Saturday he had to sit out most of the first half with foul trouble, came in, played big in the second half. Today it's a little bit different where he did get to play in the first half but wasn't very effective. Now in the second half here, he's playing great basketball. We're going to see him drive here, not get too deep, pull up. It's a beautiful pull up. Lucas White, a 79% free throw shooter. Rivery coming back into the ball game. He spells number th 23, Sidney Robinson, who picked up number four. Big factor in this game, Robinson, who scored 14 points when these two teams got together the first time and averages 10 points a game, been held to just four points thus far. And that one rims out. So the new irons unkind. Brevard knifes in and finds the range. Beautiful little floater by Brevard. He's been unable to make that over Tyshawn Crawford so far this half until that time. Dropped it in nicely. He's got 10. Montero looking for space. Working against the 6'9 Mora. Oh. Takes him to school. Six foot four Montero against six foot nine Mora. No problem for Montero. He's got 15, averages 18 a game. Top scores in all the land. Look what I found for Brevard. Yeah, Coach Dimitris is furious at Miguel Arnold for not coming up with that loose ball. He's staring him down. Try to dribble that ball into his possession. You got to grab that. You can't dribble it into your possession. Moore bats it out as he's trying to dribble it. Makes it two points for Lander. Miguel Arnold's going to have to come back strong from that one. He's had a, played a good game, been all over the place, and just kind of didn't finish that play off. One possession game, 5.26 left to go in the second half. Oh. 
This one has gone as anticipated. Crawford turns and oh. faces and schools him. That's just beautiful basketball. Nice touch. His touch is the most underrated part of his game. He's got a beautiful touch around the basket. Guess who? Splashing it home, Mr. Rankin. That's number six, Chad. Uh, Coach Dimitris is loyal to that zone at this moment, dedicated to that zone. Zane, Zane Rankins is making him pay. Tyree will try one. Ball tipped out and Brevard's got it, three on one. There's a lob. Brevard's got it again. In close. And the big fella may have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Getting his legs cut out from under him, but no. Fortunately for Augusta, not called against Ty Dunn. Yeah, I think White. There's, yeah, see Rankin make this three here. I think at the last second, the referee kind of realized he had made a call that maybe shouldn't have been made and he threw it on Darren Lucas White instead of Tyshawn Crawford. Coach 13 now for Brevard. This time the lane violation goes against Lander. You know, I said it earlier, you can cut the tension with a knife in here. One point game right ahead of the last media timeout. It's crunch time at Chris and Barry Fieldhouse. Augusta with a seven and two record on their home floor. Lander six and three on the road. Crawford heads back to the line. Tyshawn will get another opportunity. Unofficially, this is his 10th attempt at the line here tonight. He's seven of 10. Stop the presses. man who's averaging a double-double. Having a sensational game here tonight with 17. Moore with the pull-up off the bank. He's got 14. Arnold back on the floor. Along with Montero, Myers, Crawford, and Cracknell. Crawford with that soft touch. This is the first, mm. second one in the air. There's a whistle and a foul in the paint. Coach Drew Richards in his first season. As you can see him in the background, he is beside himself. He is. Um, you know, obviously he wanted a charge on that first move by Crawford. 
But you know, after that call wasn't called, Crawford got hit in the head repeatedly, so Dimitris could be equally mad. That's probably an acting job there. But watch this. Multiple clubs to the face. One, two. And if you look back there at the, in the distance, he's talking about hitting them on the head. And yeah. it's actually Crawford that's got hit on the head. Yeah. What a game, Chad. Like, you know, I keep saying attention can be cut with a knife in this building. You know, you look over here, you see Dimitris just imploring to his team. You know, he's bent over. See his head bobbing up and down. He's giving them instructions. Turns around, he's got a scowl on his face. Throws his arms out to the referees. I think he's looking for a flagrant on that, um, you know, attempt at a finish by Tyshawn Crawford and getting hit in the head. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you don't, if you're Dimitris and you don't fight for Tyshawn Crawford on a regular basis, he will get beaten up, you know, because it's just human nature. We've talked about it a lot. It's human nature to not call a foul when a big guy like that gets hit. Now, there was a technical foul evidently here. We heard bench warning, so that wasn't the technical. Drew Richard, our, our public address announcer, Jason Shear, trying to get the particulars. And in the event, Troy Cracknell will head to the line. Shoot the technical where he knocks down the first one. One shot tech. So we had two delay of games. I'm not sure how the second one occurred. Crawford, Cracknell rather with 11 points in the game. Those of you who had traveled up to uh, Lander. Back on January the 8th, you might remember Cracknell had a solid performance with 19 in the game. In tonight's contest, he with 11, Montero with 15, Crawford with 17, and he misses a pair at the line. Two-point game. Brevard. And there goes Miguel to the floor. Coach has to like that one after he didn't go down on that previous play, Chad. And you see Darren Lucas White and Sean Moss just up clapping for Miguel, supporting their teammate. On the right wing, Miguel. Miguel Arnold's got a big smile on his face. High fives all around from Montero and Cracknell. A big play on one end, a bigger play on the other. Can't let him get loose. He knows these rims as well as anybody. Watch his strip and this layout for the ball by Miguel Arnold. I'm not going to dribble it into my possession this time, coach. I got you. Big shot to extend the lead to five. So much time left in this game. We got players, coaches, wiping up these wet spots. You know, I do humbly submit that Augusta get some people to, you know, be ready to wipe these spots up. Well, we got enough athletes here. You know, we see it at other schools when we go on the road. Miguel Arnold. What a sequence from the sophomore 
from Miami, from Puerto Rico. Pure shooter. Varian. Welcome home. That's what Dion Varian does at mid range to deep jump shot. That's just a tough shot. He's up to the task. Dion Varian, the former Lakeside High School star. His teammates here watch, his teammates are here watching him. Time out on the floor. Marion, who averages 13 on the season, has been held in check tonight with just five points. A big shot, cutting the lead to two. So right, coming out of this timeout, Another opportunity for a set play offensively. What do you think Dip's going to? I'll be shocked if this ball doesn't find Rafael Montero in the low post. I would guess over here on the right side. First, Augusta's going to have to handle this pressure, but after that, I think that's where we're headed. Nice conversation while they're wiping the floor down on this end with uh, Tyshawn Crawford and Moore. Both of them big smiles on their faces as they converse. Tyshawn says, are you sure you're 6'9"? I must be 7'2". <laughs> Still growing. So Myers on the floor with Cracknell, Arnold. Montero. <laughs> I thought Miguel was going to pull that one. And Crawford. There's the pass. Gorgeous look and a lefty layup as good by Montero. Rafael floats it with his left hand over the 6'9 more with all the touch in the world. How do you make that shot? He must have been watching the Super Bowl on Sunday. What a catch in traffic and a throwaway. This is just amazing right here. He did this earlier in the half on the right side. What a pass by Tyree Myers. Just catches Deion Barry and sleeping. The help comes no matter for Rafael Montero. You know, so so enraptured by the, uh, so captivated by the finish by Montero. I didn't notice the incredible pass from Tyree Myers, who has the ball now. Montero. Backing down Barry. Lefty layup blocked inside. Arians on the right side. There's a dribble drive to the hole, and it's good. Big basket by Spivery. Augusta with a two-point lead inside of the final minute in regulation. Myers. Spin dribble against Brevard. Left side, Miguel. Miguel pulling up. Arnold, front iron no good, kept alive, and the ball thrown off the face of Elijah Alston and out of bounds. He barely flinches. Troy Cracknell with the hustle. He doesn't watch this shot. He crashes, gets his hand on it, presence of mind to throw it as hard as he can. Works out for him. Poor guy, Alston. That's never fun to get, get a ball in the face. Gus has now, has now subbed Darren Lucas White in for Tyshawn Crawford, probably to circumvent any kind of intentional foul to put Crawford on the line. Interior pass, Montero rejected by Moore. It's into the corner. 
three-point attempt by Arnold. Follow up inside by Lucas White. Oh, oh my God. Goal attempt. Hit a head pass. On the wing, there's a steal. Fires with it. Montero. And they're gonna hold on to the basketball. Now, did me there's a backcourt foul. Yeah, Dimitris has to be careful to not get a technical foul. There's an obvious miss on the goaltend. He's livid about it. He has to not put his team in a position to get a technical foul on this play. You're going to see a goaltend in a minute here after Darren Lucas White rebounds Miguel Arnold's miss. So if the ball hits the backboard first, it can't be touched. Might. Rough. Arnold will take the ball back out and yeah. reset the offense. Quick shot with 15 seconds on the shot clock. And here's the opportunity right here. And it did hit the backboard first. Now, so it would appear that Montero good on the first free throw. Sends the lead to three. This is the big one. Two possession game. 17 now for Montero. One off his season average. As the Jaguar fans yelling MVP for Rafael Montero. And he has been an MVP thus far this year, Chad. We're going to play this goal. Well, actually, I think what we're going to see here... Well, this is that great finish by Rafael Montero a moment ago. We're probably going to look at this goal 10 one more time. You know, the only question I have, if the ball hits the backboard and is still on the way up, is that a goal 10? I think so, based on my knowledge of the game. Here comes Darren Lucas White. The ball is going to hit the backboard first and then get scraped. But no matter, the MVP, Rafael Montero, and, you know, in between all that ruckus, the reason why Rafael went to the line was a steal by Tyree Myers, but here's back to action. Rivard, pull-up jump shot, strong, kept alive. Marion has it on the weak side. There's a whistle and a foul committed, or is it held ball? It's a foul against Augusta. Montero picks it up. That's number, number three for Rafael. That will not be a shooting foul. Yeah, just the 16 foul. One more and Augusta's over the limit. 7.9 seconds left. Still a four-point four game, two-possession, excuse me, four-point lead and a two-possession game for Augusta. You know, while they're cleaning up this uh, wet spot on the floor, after that goal 10 that was missed, the ball went the other end, and uh, Lander had a, a, a kind of a chaotic break going, and Tyree Myers snuck in out of nowhere, stole the ball, saved it to Rafael Montero to cause that foul where Rafael could go to the line and, and give Augusta a four-point lead. So a lot of unsung heroes here at the end for Augusta. Set to inbounds is Berrien. Bullet pass, and it's off the hands, taken by Myers, and Myers will secure the biggest win of the season for Augusta. Biggest win of the year for Augusta in this one. And what a huge, huge victory it will be. Three tenths of a second remaining. And two shots coming for Tyree Myers. Chad mentioned unsung hero. Defensive stand on one side and then a race down into the corner on this end. And the icing on the cake. Double figures with 10. Now make it 11. Three tenths of a second is all that it is, and it's not enough as Augusta picks up their 14th win of the year, more importantly, their ninth victory in Peach Belt Conference play, and they're one game out of first place pending the outcome of UNC Pembroke's contest, Pembroke's contest 
as uh, Augusta wins this one by a final count of 77 to 71. For Lander, the Bearcats, they fall to 10 and 3 in Peach Belt Conference play, 16 and 5 overall. And uh, with the exception of one game, all of their games have been within six points or less, all their losses, that is. Georgia Southwestern, they lost by three to them. At Pembroke, a 19-point loss. Emmanuel, two points. And Southern Wesleyan, two, po two points on a neutral floor. So fantastic effort all the way around for Augusta and a big victory for the Jaguars as Chad Cook will have a chance to talk with our star of the game, player of the game, and it'll be none other than Miguel Arnold. And then shortly thereafter, a visit by the head coach. Here's Chad. We got the band celebrating the big win right now. You didn't get a loose ball and you got taken out for it and you got yelled at and you came right back in, stripped the ball, laid out for it, got your team possession, then made a huge three to put your team up five. Tell me about all that. So as you say, you know, I went for the ball and because they took me out and yelled at me, as you say, so I had to make it back for the coach. So I just went out there and played hard, gave my all, ripped in, got the ball, and kept playing hard and knocked the, down, the three down that we needed it because we was, it was, we was all one and we needed that three, so I just want to play hard. When you laid out for that ball, got the loose ball, and then made a three on the other end, I saw all your teammates jumping up and down, giving you five. You have the support of your teammates, don't you? Yeah, yes, I did. They knew, they, they knew what happened before that play when I went soft for the ball, so they were happy that I went and got it back and did it for the team, you know? Yes. So that's something good that we did. It takes big plays like that. You made them. Tyree Myers made them. Rafael Montero, Tyshawn Crawford, Troy Cracknell, Darren, everybody. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Great sir. job. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you. Coach, um, I just talked to Miguel about him not, not getting that, not ball, getting yes, that loose yes. ball and then coming right back in and repaying it, not just with the, the layout, but also the three on the other end. Tell me about that. I wasn't happy. You know, we had talked all two days about getting loose balls, and he he, he didn't go after it. So he I tried to, to dribble it, it into his yeah, possession. Yeah, don't do that in a game like this. So I told him he's going to go back in there, and he made a big shot and a big steal at the end. Uh, you know, our key was the rebound. I don't know if we out-rebounded him, but at halftime we were up. We got two fast, two possessions in a row, Troy and Darren. Uh, then we settled down. Big fellow started missing some free throws, so we had to deal with that at the end. But it's a good team win. Seven left. And, and, and still two back, uh, but we got ourselves closer to Lander down. I'm going to make you talk for a little while here because, uh, you know, it's a big win. Rafael Montero catches a ball, kind of awkward, throws it up over big 6'9 more, kisses off the glass. Then he did an even more impressive left-handed kiss off yes. the glass over yes. more. And then one time he had it at 18 feet, jab, step, jab, step, jumper. The shots he makes are incredible. Is he the most skilled player you've ever coached? He's the most skilled, unathletic player I've ever coached. He's not a great athlete. The best thing tonight was he picked up two fouls. He lost his head a little bit. We weren't going to play in the first half because we didn't want to get in foul trouble. And I was worried because when he gets up two fouls, sometimes he gets too hard on himself. When he came back, was big force. He, you know, he took three charges. Took three in charges. The first five minutes of the second half. And then half. when we went zone, he rebounded the weak side three times. And then we had to chase the corner. We couldn't get that weak side rebound. So, no, he was huge defensively. And the main thing is he didn't – him and Miguel did not let the mistakes lead to the, another mistake. Yeah. And speaking of huge defensively, you talked about shrinking the floor. And Tyree Myers was in every dribble lane. Everyone. He even made – after that goaltend call that they missed, yeah. he made the steal on the other end. Absolutely. He was everywhere. Yeah, you know, early in the first half we missed one. Miguel missed one shrink situation. Uh, I think uh, Troy missed one shrink situation. We knew that they were going to bring Tyson out on the floor and try to drive him. And our guys did a good job, you know, of guarding that drive. You know, they're good players. But the main thing is when we help, we're able to get the rebound too. They're good players. You're a great coach. Um, you know, I look at guys learning things on the court. Darren gets too deep in the, in the paint a yeah. few times in the first half comes back, shoots a little soft jumpers in the second half. He did, half. you know, he, he's doing all this double clutches stuff, and I said, you're not going to get a foul call to do that. He shoots your pull-up. He's good at pull-up. He's got such ability to get to the rim, uh, you know, he doesn't make them. And, and first half, 
The three he missed led to transition buckets. The one Rob dropped led to a transition bucket. So when we drove, we had to make sure we get back guard play. Uh, but no, Darren came in, did a great job defensively in the zone. He got his hands on a basketball one time. And uh, it was a great team win tonight. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, the guy who's just progressing faster than anybody, Tyshawn Crawford, he's yeah. just in a great rhythm right now. He's enjoying basketball. You know, he's, here's the step. When I come into practice tomorrow, he better be, he'll, he'll be shooting free throws. Early in the year, he, he wanted to avoid it, okay? And he missed about six in a row in a stretch, but he stuck with it. He kept playing, and he's improving a lot. You know, and it's hard to referee him because he's so big, uh, but he didn't get frustrated. I don't know on that one if he pushed off or not. I don't, you know, the guy looked like he got shot out of a cannon. So, yeah, right. uh, but no, he, he played well, and he's able to play a lot of minutes. You know, in a slow-paced game, his condition's not a factor. He got a little tired in the first half when he didn't go transition one time, but now he's playing phenomenal. Yeah, you know, you mentioned him shooting free throws at the beginning of practice. Made five of his first six. He made two. I know he missed a few in a row. Yep. Then he made two to put you up three in yes. crunch time. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. Great yeah. job. So let's, uh, why don't we play again? We go Flagler. to Flagler. Yeah, Flagler. We got two road games, Flagler and Francis Marion, and we got to take care of business. And then you're back home. Back home. Hey, um, good luck on the road. Thank you. Great job tonight. Thanks, yep. Okay, as you can tell, I'm excited. I know everybody in Jag Nation is too. Um, I'll send it back to you, Charles, to sign off, and hopefully uh, everybody enjoyed the game. Yeah, I'm sure they did, Chad. They definitely enjoyed this one as Augusta puts an end to Lander's six-game win streak, and uh, Augusta improves for three-game win streak. Victory is now over USC Aiken, our arch rival, Columbus State, and now Lander the top team in the uh, conference, and a big win it was, 77-71. to 71. Augusta outscoring them 36-35 to 35 in the, excuse me, 36-33 to 33 in the second half after outscoring them 41-38 to 38 in the first 20 minutes of play. Your leading scorers tonight for Augusta, Rafael Montero led all scorers with 21 points. He had four rebounds in tonight's contest. It was Tyshawn Crawford with 17 points and 15 rebounds eight of those on the offensive boards. Two assists and three block shots for the big fella. 11 points in the game for Tyree Myers. He also had six assists. Miguel Arnold with a solid defensive effort. He had 11 points along with uh, two steals and four assists in tonight's game. Nine points for Troy Cracknell, four points for Darren Lucas White. Robert Balloon had four points as well to uh, pace the uh, Jaguars who improved now with the victory to 14 and seven. They're now 10 or make that nine and four in conference play. Lander, they fall to 10 and three in uh, conference play and 16 and five overall. They were paced by 18 point performance uh, by Rankin who had six made threes in seven attempts, 14 points in the contest for Dewan Moore and uh, 13 for Tyler Brevard in a losing effort. So once again, your final score, Augusta, 71, Lander, 77-71, your final score in the women's contest. It was 85-61 to 61 in favor of Lander, who remains undefeated in Peach Belt Conference play. So from our broadcast partner, Chad Cook, and for our entire SUV TV family, I'm the Mac Daddy, Charles McNeil, wishing you the very best for the remainder of your week, and we certainly hope to have you back with us next time when we return to action on uh, Saturday, February the 15th versus UNC Pembroke. Until then, good night and God bless everyone.